Now, what do we do if our query is more general? So, for example, let's take this query, which is the AND of two OR terms, Madding OR Crowd and Ignoble OR Strife. So, how do we process this kind of a query where we also have an OR term? Well, just as for the AND heuristic, we, um, we said that the length of the postings lists uh, the, the estimate of the answer if we do Brutus and Caesar we, we, we saw that the length of the answer is going to be less than or equal to the smaller of these two postings lists. Now when we have an OR term the length of the answer in this particular case is going to be the length of this list plus the length of this list minus the length of the elements minus the number of elements that are common to both these lists. So this is the familiar uh, set union formula where the size of the set A union B is equal to the size of A plus the size of B minus the size of A intersection B. So one heuristic that we could use to estimate the size of an OR term is to sum the lengths of the two lists which are being ORed. So we can estimate the size of each OR by the sum of its frequency and this is obviously a conservative estimate because um, in reality this intersection is going to be finite and the actual length is going to be uh, smaller than the sum of the lengths. But because we don't know what this intersection is unless we actually calculate it, if we are just given the length of A and the length of B as given by the, doc frequ the document frequency field, we, th the best possible estimate that we can come up with for uh, the OR result is the sum of uh, the lengths of the two postings lists. So when we have an OR term and we are taking the AND of several of these OR terms, how do we know which, sorry, so this or this, something or something ANDed with something else or something else ANDed with something else or something else. How can we uh, how, how do we decide which which uh, OR operation to carry out first? Again, we can use the document frequencies of the terms, these six terms. We can estimate the size of each of these OR terms by summing the lengths of the postings lists for the two terms involved in the OR operation. And whichever is the smaller pair of lengths for these three, we are going to AND that particular pair. So if this length and this length both end up being smaller than this length, that is this ends up being the largest value when we estimate the size of the OR term, we'll parenthesize in this way, calculate this result first, which will, which we will then AND with this particular result. So here is uh, an exercise. Can you recommend a query processing order for this particular query? Tangerine or trees, anded with marmalade or skies, anded with kaleidoscope or eyes. And these are the document frequencies of each of the six terms. So eyes and kaleidoscope are grouped together because we are taking the OR of that. Marmalade and skies have been grouped together in this diagram because those two are together in the OR operation and tangerine or trees. So how do you decide which pair of uh, terms to take the AND operation of? Anybody? So whoever tries to answer, could you also announce your name uh, just so that I know uh, I know who you are because 
you know, at this distance, I can't see your faces properly. So uh, if you can tell your name, maybe, you know, uh, we'll be able to have a little bit more personal interaction that way. Uh, hello, sir. My name is Aditya. Uh, yeah. I think it should be eyes and kaleidoscope first because that's approximately 29,000. Uh, followed by uh, tangerine and trees because that's something like 36,000. And the last one, which is approximately 38,000. So... Uh, yeah that that yeah that's right so it's actually one order of magnitude uh, more so this is uh, 200 and i mean this is about uh, 290000 uh, not 29000 this this there are six terms over here but you're right basically if the sum of these two is the smallest the sum of these two is the next smallest and the sum of these two is the largest among these three pairs. So because this is the smallest and this is the second smallest, we are going to do eyes or kaleidoscope and it with tangerine or trees. Okay, so I've uh, parenthesized these two terms over here. So we're going to take this AND operation first and then we are going to do this particular AND operation. Is that clear to everyone? Now how about a not? Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, so what's the reason for doing it in this order exactly? Like what's the real benefit? So the real benefit is the same uh, that we saw last time, which is we want to minimize preferably as far as possible we want to minimize the size of the intermediate results because the intermediate results are going to be used for further operations and if the length of the intermediate results is small then recall that all these operations uh, the, the, these boolean operations take time proportional to the lengths right at least the walkthrough of the pointers takes time proportional to the uh, lengths of the two lists. So if the length of any of the lists can be reduced, then we end up minimizing the total amount of time to process this query. So that's the motivation for... I mean, this again, this doesn't guarantee that, this doesn't guarantee that uh, you know, this particular method will minimize the processing time. Again, you can construct uh, examples where this won't work. So this is just a heuristic. What were you asking? Sorry, did I interrupt you? Uh, like, no, sir. Like, I mean, I was saying that the three OR operations, they have to be done in all cases, right? So how, how does it matter what order we do it first? Sir? Yeah, the three OR operations will need to be done in any case, right? But we are talking about these two AND operations. Ultimately, after taking these 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 uh, three OR operations, you have these two AND operators, just like we had, um, you know, this query. Uh, so w the, the difference here is that instead of having single terms over here, each of these three operands is an OR result. Right, so it's a, it's a more complicated example where you have an OR result instead of single terms. And so here, if we just looked at the lengths of the postings list for these single terms directly in the dictionary. Now, because it's an OR result, you'll have to calculate the length of each of these three operands. And you'll have to do that by taking the uh, terms inside the OR bracket and adding up the lengths of the postings list. So you're right, I mean, we're not trying to minimize the uh, the work by choosing between these OR operations. We have to do all three OR operations. We don't have any choice on that. But we do have a choice on uh, these two AND operations. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's take another uh, 
So one of the reasons why we are taking this AND operation is because AND queries are the most common queries on on uh, on the web, and also you know in other cases. So somehow or the other, you know, people tend to um, when they type queries, they tend to think of all the terms as, or at least most of the terms as far as possible, as necessary to be present in the document. So let's look at this AND operation friends and Romans and not countrymen. So now instead of an OR result, now you have a NOT result. The third term is a NOT result. So how do we decide which of these two AND operations to do first? We can estimate the size of the NOT result this time pretty exactly by taking the number of documents in the corpus and subtracting from it the size of the postings list for countrymen. So the, pre the length of the postings list for not countrymen, this result, intermediate result, will be the total number of documents in the corpus minus the length of the countrymen postings list. And this length is something you know because you have the document frequency of countrymen stored along with it in the dictionary. So this pretty much uh, finishes this section on query optimization.